So first of all, tell me why the Salute to Service game is special to you. Uh, well, for one, you know, everybody in my family military, especially my ace, my wife, <laughs> she just promoted the tech sergeant. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. So tell me about how you guys met and what you've thought about her being in the military, what that's been like for you being married to somebody who is military. Uh, just in the beginning, I already had like respect for it, you know, just being around my cousins, my uncles, all of them just serving. I got guys, well, my cousin right now deployed, you know. So getting with her and meeting her in college, it was just, it was a respect thing already. And then she was already a great woman, great person. And I just kind of understood what she was going through, that commitment, that, that level of trust. And I was like, if you can, you know, sacrifice for something greater than you, I know you can be there for somebody like me, so. That's amazing. And I mean, NFL career, military career, these are two that ask you to move a lot. They are very uncertain at times. There's a, there's a lot of chaos going on and Correct. what that looks like. How do you guys make that work and, and how has that influenced your marriage? Being adaptable. I think that's one of the biggest things. Like you said, being able to move a lot of places, but also pick back up where you left off. So um, when we move around, just leaning on one another, whether she got to go to work or, you know, us moving around, relocating different teams. It's hard on both of us. Sometimes she has to leave and go do her thing, you know, a drill. And I got to do my thing on Sundays, Monday or Thursday night, depending on where, you know, it has to be. And so we understand that we're going to have to move around, but we also understand that we have to make those type of changes on the fly. And we just communicate, talk. Being married to somebody military is definitely not the only unconventional part of your path to get here. So you were the first Belizean to be drafted into the NFL. Did you know that at the time when that happened? Uh, no, I didn't. And to be honest with you, I didn't really even think about it. And then when it all started happening and they came up with the name, the Belizean Beast, it was just, it was like <laughs> surreal. Dang, I've always wanted to be a household name. I didn't know I was going to do it in my own country. So. It was, it was nice. It was that's, like, a, that's a great nickname, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty incredible. Now, I don't know if that versus Nacho. Yeah. Those You got some two pretty great nicknames. Where did, I mean, the Belizean Beast, we understand yeah. where it came from. Where did Nacho come from? Uh, Nacho actually came from when I was with Ken City. I was in the D-line room with a guy, a great guy, Dante Poe, and I was just eating a bag of chips. Everybody know I love chips. I was crunching, and if you know, in meeting rooms, it's very quiet. He was like, dang, Notch, and it just that stuck. That was it. From that moment, everybody in that building called me Nacho. And I was like, it's better for me because I don't have to teach somebody how to say my last name. What was the, the childhood like, the transition from living there to moving here and, and starting to go to high school in the U.S.? And what do you remember about what you had to learn as you became more in the U.S. culture of where you had come from, where you are now, and, and some of the challenges of that? Going from... Uh, how can I say, a country that's more family oriented, a country that needs each other to kind of be successful. When you come to the U.S., it's more individual based. I got to get me, you know, what's running my household. And so it, it was bigger because I only had my mom and she was trying to take care, you know, me and, and raise a young man in the world. It was just difficult because it was a lot put on her coming here with, you know, high school education, some college. It was just a big transition. Back there, you had everybody help you. Even if you go to the grocery store, sometimes you don't have it, they'll help you out. Where here, if you don't have it, you just don't have it. You and your mom would uh, go distribute some food and supplies to yeah. homeless people. And um, where did that come from? What do you remember? And, and how did that shape who you've become now? It did a lot for me. Because we didn't have that much then. And it used to just blow me like, Mom, we're struggling ourselves. Why are we getting all these things together to go help other individuals? And it made more sense, like, we understand where they're coming from. We just used to get together. She used to do things at her job. Can you help us raise non-perishable items? I used to do things at school. Teachers used to give me, you know, items of any type of donations. And then we'll get home after a long day with her, with work, me with school, and uh, any sport that I was playing, we'll put these bags together. Book bags for the homeless, food, a gift card, and then we'll go at four o'clock in the morning before I went to school, four or five in the morning, when these uh, homeless shelters will release out and we'll park out there and we'll just hand out the bags. Sometimes you would think homeless people would be older and they were around my age sometimes coming out of those homeless shelters. So it was humbling. It was a, a heart, you know, warming experience like, oh my God, I can be here. And sometimes we were there. Yeah, that's incredible. And 
Looking at all these different experiences of moving here when you were a kid and what your mom taught you and, and all of the interactions you had with these people, how do you feel like that shaped the kind of person you are for the Buccaneers even, the kind of player you are and what you bring to this team? I think the way it shapes me and molds me and who I am for this organization, one, it takes a lot to bring me down because I know it's other things going on in life other than football, you know? And then two, I am who I am. I come out here, I'm high-spirited because I know there's another life out here. All y'all seen was America, the U.S. I know what Belize look like. I know what a third world country look like. So, like I said, it can always be worse. And then as far as the accountability, all the things that I seen growing up, like no matter what, my mom has to go work early in the morning. I gotta make sure I get myself to school. I gotta make sure I eat. I gotta make sure I take care of my school work so that my mom can do what she does, you know? So that was my accountability as a young child. And that's what rolls over to the game. Nacho, I need you to be here. I need you to make this play. I need you to do that. So from a young kid, learning accountability, and I'm displaying it here as an adult. And you were just so ready for that accountability when you were called upon, especially last year, Vita goes down with an injury, and now you realize you're about to be a big part, uh, an even bigger part, of this team chasing a Super Bowl. It was just when the opportunity came, I was ready to show out, and that's basically what happened. I prepared for it. I feel like I almost hear players saying, as good as you are on the field and the X's and O's and what you can do and you know, wrecking the run game and all that, your personality and energy is just as important yeah. to this team. <laughs> would, would you say that's fair? It is, it is. At first I didn't understand it. Like, it's one of those things you don't really want to believe it, you know? Because I've never been that guy, I guess. And I'm just me. So I don't see it as no other, no other person. But I remember one time or a few times where I would come in the building, I'm like, you know, today I wouldn't say much. And each individual from player, coaches, cooking, cleaning, each individual in the building, what's wrong? What's wrong? I'm like, I'm just trying to be normal. I ain't want to, you know, be all loud today. And they're like, no, nah, we need that. We love that. And I was just, that's who I am. So here you get. <laughs> so would you say you're the loudest guy on the team? Oh yeah, I'm definitely the loudest guy. I, Sometimes I don't even like to claim it, but then I look around, it's very quiet, and I'm the only guy talking. I'm like, yeah, yeah. you're the lousy guy, <laughs> for sure.